Okay, guys, you are welcome back to class. So sorry for the uh how do I describe that? So sorry for losing uh you guys for like 30 minutes. So the reason is because I had issues power. So my generator so we are welcome back. So we are discussing basic concepts in session four. Then we discuss task incidents, task incidents, task sheets, task ways, and task effects. So we are about to discuss uh, task yield when uh, I left the class. So task yield is just like what we do say in business. Like put some amount of money in this business. What return will it yield in the next, you know, six months? What return? In the next that is how much do you get in return for putting such a small amount of money in that business? So likewise, in taxation, so passage is the return in form of tax revenue derived from the administration of tax on tax payers. Okay. So the main question now is the main question is the matter of taxation. So who bears the burden of the tax, the producers or the consumers? And we look at the elasticity of demand, you know, which determines how the tax is shared between the manufacturer and the buyer. So again, tax yield is the return. Why? Task burden, task incidents, task impacts, then task effects, and task bonds, or who has who bears the effect, or who does task impact. Okay. Then we look at task base. <clears throat> so everything in life has a basis. Okay, has a basis. So and the basis for subjecting or Telling you that you are liable to tax is could be on your income, okay, your property or profit. Okay, so the tax base for company income tax now is the what is the uh, profit from the business. Okay, is the profit from the business. So without the tax base, then there is no tax. So, for instance, now what is the task base for valid task? Okay, task base for valid task is consumption. Okay, in as much that you consume the goods and services that are to valid task. Though you may not make reference to the exemption, uh, you know, introduced by the valid task act. We have zero rated goods, then we also have uh, non vacuable goods and services. Okay, so. For the non valuable goods and services, there's no need for filing tax return, VAT return, tax, so you are not paying VAT on that. But for the zero rated goods and uh, zero rated goods and services, then those ones are, you know, we will say they are liable to VAT, but at zero percent. So which means that they are not paying VAT, but there has the, uh, you know, the uh, civic obligation to provide a bad returns, okay? To provide a bad returns, so they have the responsibility. So that's all on the uh, concept on uh, basic concept of taxation. Okay, so, sorry, we move to classification of taxes. Classification of taxes. So, yes, you may not find these in your uh, <clears throat> study test. You are using your CIT study test. So I feel I thought you know it was important to include this in your notes when I was preparing at the class notes. Okay, so if we have discussed you know the essentials of taxation, the you know um, uh, what was it called the essentials of taxation, we looked at the definition of tax. Then we also discussed the basic concepts in taxation. So it is also important for us to tell us what are the types of taxes that we have. Okay, so basically, 
we have classification by incidents. Okay, we have classification by incidents, meaning that we say, okay, there's direct tasks and indirect tasks. So don't, don't forget our definition of tasks by incidents. So, okay, so because we refer to the place or the person that bears, you know, the body of the task. So when we say direct tasks, so direct tasks means that the government is collecting the money from you directly. Okay, so you are liable to the task and you, are, you also have the responsibility to remit the task. Do you understand this? So again, you are liable to pay the task. You also have, you also have the responsibility to remit the task. Okay, so now for instance, let's take company income tasks. Okay, so for company income tasks, the company, okay, has the responsibility. So they are liable to task, for instance, we assume they are liable to task then, because they are liable to task, the provision of the company's income tax act in line with the section 55 of the act, okay, so makes it mandatory for all taxpayers to, you know, to file their returns. So, and why filing your returns? If you have tax liability to pay, then you have to pay it as a when due. Otherwise, you have to face, uh, you have to, the consequence is that you pay penalty, okay, and then uh, interest. So this type of tax is levied directly on the taxpayer's income. Then also, if you are an employee, okay, in a contract of employment, so you would, you also pay as you earn. Abi, that's payee, which is denoted from your salary at the end of each month or when salary is being paid. So then it is a direct tax. You are paying it directly, okay? So the government is charging it directly on your income. But for the indirect tax, who bears the incidence? The consumer. But who collects the VAT? The vendor. So you walk into a restaurant, then you order for food, this food are table, okay, because you are consuming the food in their premises. Even if you are taking it away, so you see attracts VAT, okay? So then indirectly, when you are ordering for the food, you don't have that mindset of even paying VAT. I said probably during the course of uh, the order, uh, you placing the order, then there was uh, at the point, maybe you are placing the order online, okay? So at the point, you see your uh, pre-order invoice, okay? So your pre-order invoice is showing VAT at 7.5%. So probably at that point, they are aware that, oh, I'll be paying VAT on this purchase, okay, on this order. But if you walk into the restaurant, you, you know, at the uh, decks, you order for your food, then you are served, okay, or you pick, you pick your food from there. You see now you consume the food in the restaurant and the likes, or probably the packets, then you take it away. So it's only when you are, you know, conscious enough, conscious enough to check the invoice or the receipt you are issued, then you get to know that, oh, VAT is included in this thing I, I, you know, I ordered for. So otherwise, you may not be aware. But the restaurant owner knows that they must remit the VAT they have collected from you. Okay, so that is an indirect task. So the incidence is on the what is on the uh, uh the customer okay so and don't forget that we say we have two types of incidents we have the legal incidents and we have the effective impact so the legal impact is on the what on the vendor so they must deduct and remit even if they don't deduct they must still remit in as much as the transaction is and the, the goods or services in question is factible okay so then the effective impact is on the what is on the uh, consumer i hope that is clear do you understand? Hello, is it understood? Yes, it's understood. So then under the classification of taxes, you have direct, direct, and indirect. So these two types of tasks also has their you know merits and the merits, advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage for direct taxes includes that uh, it is low, you know, uh it has low cost of collection. Let me put it that way. It has low cost of us low cost of collection so it is easy to administer okay so it is more equitable as the taxpayer with higher income bears a greater body and it is easier to ascertain tax incidents okay that is direct you know who bears the body directly but 
in the indirect task, now it's not easy for you to know the, the uh, to ascertain the task incidence because we don't know who the final consumer will be. For instance, now let's say uh, in the classification of industry, if my head is if I'm not saying the wrong thing. So I know we have the extraction industry, Abby. Then we have the uh, is it conversion, Abby. Then the last one is it service or is it service or what is it called? I forgot it. So the extraction has to do with uh, the raw material, where the raw materials is coming from. So for instance, now maybe uh, let's take uh, palm oil. Okay, so it started from the palm canal. Okay, so then the conversion, then that's the manufacturing company who converts the raw material into, you know, finished goods. That is at the point where it is readily uh, available for consumption. Okay, then the service people, we have the retailer, the wholesaler, you know, and the like. So those are the ones that we take it to the final consumer. Okay, so then at the extraction stage, okay, so now if the raw material this person is extracting and selling to the manufacturer is valuable. So at the points of this transaction between the extractor and the convert and converter, that is the manufacturer. So if it's not if it's not easy to ascertain the task incidence, Abby. Because you don't know who the final buyer will be, who the final consumer will be. Do you get that? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the case of indirect tax. You know, we just use valid tax as an example. But in the case of income tax, so this company or this guy now will be paying what? Will be paying either personal income tax if it is an individual or what? Or company income tax if it is a company. The manufacturer too. If it is a company, we pay company income tax. And if it is an individual, we pay personal income tax. Then the service organization, the, uh, so the what's it called? The retailer, the distributor, wholesaler, and the likes. They also pay company income tax. So that one, the tax incidence is easy to ascertain. Uh, then we have the merits. So, the disadvantage is that it may discourage hard work. Because we see people from experience running from paying taxes, especially income tax. So, so they don't want to pay because uh, that's how you see most people. When you tell them to go and register their business, what will be the first thing to come to that, that comes to? What do they tell you? Hmm? If you have your oh, sister, I'm going to start paying tax now. <laughs> I was doing small business. I now advise him that, Uncle, why didn't you go and register your business? What, what would be the first thing they would tell you? You want them to start paying tax. Say that, huh? Hey, so I should go and register my business. This small small money where they take do business, hey, the government, the government can't collect and too much. Money. So, you know, that's the mindset. So, so it discourages people to be hard work, hard working. Then people tend to, you know, hide what they do. Then also it gives room for tax evasion, especially if the tax rates are high. Because when people are doing their business in their home or in a small place, they don't have it registered. How does the government capture such? Okay. So even those that have that are duly registered with the under the with the corporate affairs commission, they are not all known to the uh, you know FIRS guys. Okay, so not even to talk of the ones that are not even registered at all. So it's good, it gives room for for tax evasion. Then it may cause unrest, especially if the tax rates are very high since the tax payers bear the whole body. Okay, so. Because you know what you are paying, that ah, this thing I'm paying is too much. Room. So you earn, uh, let's say, 1,000 naira now. And you have to pay 30% of 1,000 naira that you earn. So you are paying 300 naira to someone that does not even contribute to the sweat of the money. Eh? The 
person did not contribute to the work in progress of the money. The person does not participate in the cost of sales of the money. Now it is time for revenue. The person is coming with his or a knife. So to come and cut, to come and take a cut, to come and take their share. So that's why people find it. Uh, most people, let me just say, put it that way. Most people do, do not like to or willingly pay their tax. Okay. So recently you see this um, uh, artist, I was the Yabo Joe, what was her name? Okay. So complaining that Lagos states want to kill her with, with each task. They're asking her to go and pay was it 8 million or 18 million thereabouts. That they, 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 they want to they want to take 100 percent of profit. <laughs> okay. So in that what she's saying that is that you didn't participate in my cost of sales, then you are coming here to take revenue. Why? Okay. So then that's for that that's for the rest task. Okay. So that's for the rest task. So uh, 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 in direct taxes, so also has advantages and disadvantages, and these include uh, it's a good source of revenue to governments, you know, because you don't know that you are paying tax now. Okay, you don't know you are paying tax, so because you don't have, you don't feel it, you don't feel it, right? Then because it's, it is an indirect form of uh, it is an indirect taxes, so everybody pays it. So you don't need to have a business. You don't need to register your business with the corporate affairs commission. So whether you have business or you do not have business, you pay. Okay. So it's for all. Okay. It's for it's for it's for all. Then it can be adjusted easily. Just like, look at what happened in 2020 when the finance act of 2019, you know, amends the uh, VAT rate from 5% to 7.5%. So then it is a veritable physical tool to check pattern of consumption of undesirable goods. It can be used to protect infant industries and it is more difficult to evade. You can never evade it. How, how, how do you do that? It's impossible. Okay, so except you want to be fasting every day, you know, to thy kingdom come, then you want to be staying indoor. If you are staying indoor safe, won't you parents? Okay, let's even say that, okay, the uh, task law has now exempted value tasks from, you know, rent. There's stamp duty there. <laughs> there's stamp duty. So there's no how you can you want to evade tasks, especially this indirect indirect tasks. And if you say, okay, I'm not paying rent. I own my building. I own, I own my house. Okay, I have an accommodation. I own. So then you tell me, this accommodation was it was it built by you? If yes, then. The guys that work for you, you didn't pay them. The sand you use, all those material you used to build the house. So one way or the other, you will pay this tax share. So then we move to the merits. The cost of collection may be higher, yes. Because look at, uh, I used to call it a multi-stage uh, tax. That's bad. That's valid tax. So it has a multi-stage. Okay, so because from the raw material guys, okay, so they, they pay VAT, okay, so that's the VAT they collected from the manufacturer who has come to them to get the raw materials. Okay, so we call it, we call that one output VAT, that is valid as on sales, output VAT, output VAT. Then to the manufacturer, you know, it is, uh, VAT on purchases. So we call it input VAT. VAT on purchases, we call it input VAT. So then the manufacturer, after converting the raw materials into a finished goods that is readily available for sale or for consumable or for consumption, rather, then the manufacturer also charge VAT on the finished goods that is sending to the distributor. The distributor also charge VAT on the goods that is sending to the wholesaler, from the wholesaler to the retailer, then from the retailer to the final consumer. So it's only the final consumer that does not charge VAT, but pays VAT, pays value added tax. Do you understand? So it is a multi-layer tax. So in that case, the cost of collection may be higher because you collect from the manufacturer, come to the uh, the extra, uh, the raw material guys, the manufacturer, distributor, wholesaler, a lot. 
So where there is collusion between tax officials and taxpayers to evade tax, there could be loss of revenue and may discourage investment in local industries, especially in the case of high export duties or excise duties. Okay, so that's all on that. So let's move. So still under the classification of uh, taxes. So let's look at the perspective of tax base. Perspective of tax base. So, you know, that is the classification of tax by incident. So tax can also be classified according to what is being taxed. Okay, so we've taken the classification by incidents, then now the perspective of tax base. So in Nigeria, the following bases are in use. We have the capital, we have income, then we have consumption. So the capital is, and a good example is that of property. Okay, then the, the most relevant task on this is capital gains tax. Whether you have a, a sale of shares and the likes, you pay capital gains tax. Okay, anything that has to do with property. Okay, or oh, that is capital in Asia. Okay, so when you dispose them, you pay tax. Then we have income tax. Income tax, as explained, we have a good example of this is company income tax and the personal income tax. Personal, in, uh, personal income tax. Then we have the petroleum profit tax. Okay, then consumption tax, we have what we have, uh, value tax, we have customs and exercise duties, among others. Okay, so. We also have perspective of distribution of tax body. So we have the proportional tax, progressive tax, and regressive tax. So the proportional tax has to do, you know, that is based on percentage. And a good example of this is the company income tax. Okay, so it's the company income tax. Now, there is uh, a, a, a boundary now. Okay, there's a boundary now. For, for companies that earn a revenue of 100 million and above, they pay 30%. So that is 30% in proportion of that what of their income. And uh, sorry, of the, of the profit, accessible profit, right? Then companies with turnover of between 25 million era and 100 million era, they pay 20%. Then companies with revenue a threshold of below 25 million era pays 0%. <clears throat> so one could argue that this is also a form of uh uh what is it called? Progressive tax. Okay, because look at it. As the income increases, you pay different rate of tax, different rate of tax, you know, and the likes. That's quite good, you know. So then for personal income tax, you know, we have a tax table. So this tax table ranges between zero naira, you know, to anything above uh anything above 2.6 million naira. So that is after deducting all the statutory deductions, blah, 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 and the likes. So whatever that is remaining from your uh, salary, okay, so we be, uh, we be put in the task table. Okay, so then it ranges from 7%, from 7% up towards, up to 21%, from 7% up towards, sorry, 24% rather, up to 24%. So that's what you pay as tax. So it's the progressive tax. The more income you earn, the higher tax you pay. Okay, so <clears throat> then we have regressive tax. Regressive tax, the taxpayer with smaller income pays a greater percentage of the income as tax compared with a person with higher income. Though this is not applicable in Nigeria. Okay, because how possible on this age, you will be asking someone that earns lower to be paying more tax than those that earn higher. Abba. No, 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 no. So it's not encouraging at all. So if you try that in Nigeria, my friend. <laughs> okay. Well, people, when, they will not pay anything. They will not pay anything. And you know, we are the one, we are the government. So we are assisting this government. We are contributing all our money. So we are doing contribution for them. Okay. So that they can govern us well. So that's everything we find with them. We pay them salary from the money we contribute, then they help us construct road and the likes. Okay. So only that they have not been making good use of our money. That's a story for another day. Hello, are we all together? <clears throat> yes. Okay. 
So far, so good. Any yes, questions? Yeah. Any question for your guy? Hello. Hello, any question? None for now. I just I just came back though. Oh, she did my welcome back. I've asked for you. I came Sorry. back, but said it was for professional ones. It went off like that. So I think I just oh. came online and I saw you um, you're back. Okay. Thank you. So Sorry, my laptop is off. Okay, it's not going far. I think it's not going far. So far from the Not really, not really, not really, not really. Yeah, yeah. But you. the beauty of it is that we have the class uh, recorded. Okay, so we are on record. So okay. later after the class, I know we post the uh, recorded class. Okay, so now we are on sources of past law. So we have been, I've been mentioning task, 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 task. Okay, so this, we are in the West African country. So Nigeria is our country, and Ghana is our neighboring country. So in Nigeria, our task laws, including the federal government acts and the state government laws, okay, that was, they are all sources of what's sources of Nigerian task law, sources of Nigerian task law. So in Ghana, unlike in Nigeria, we have a decentralized task system. So the federal government has their own, which is the Federal Internal Revenue Service, then the state government has all has their own too. So we, are, we call them state internal revenue service. So in Lagos State, we have the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. So if they're in Lagos, you must have been seeing them. So then, uh, in other part of the country, in Abuja, we have the FCT IRS, so that is the Federal Capital uh, Territory Internal Revenue Service. So we have it across all the states in Nigeria. So then, but in Ghana, they practice a central government tax system. Okay, so they practice a centralized tax system. Okay, so that's that. So other taxes of other sources of tax laws in Nigeria include the opinion of income tax experts and authors insofar as the court state judicial notice of them. So one of the uh, uh, task leader in Nigeria, we have is Taiwo Yedele. So, so he's a partner in PwC. So, and he's, he's, he's a, uh, I think West African task leader. Okay, so he's an expert in task. So then we have Yomi Ogunbenro, then we also have Yomi, so we have them, Sha. They are all experts. Okay. So courts, you know, and task administrator take notes of the opinion of these experts, then they put them in practice. Okay. In fact, some of them are even part of uh, the uh, Nigerian Physical Committee and the likes. So then we have court judgment on so overruled. So look at what happened during the uh, NERA scarcity. Okay, so implementation of new uh, NERA notes. So the CBN says, okay, effective so 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 date, the old notes will no longer be a, what be a legal tender. And then the court says, no, I send it to 31st December 2023. Okay, so court judgments what? Court's judgment is also in a, is, is also a source of task law in Nigeria. So why? Because we've seen a lot of cases. So there is a case of Elijah and the FIRS. There is a case of Tetra Park and the FIRS. There is a case of uh, what was it called? Multi Choice and the FIRS. MTN and the FIRS. A lot there. Okay. So the decisions of the preceding judge, presiding judge, for most of these cases. Are also what are also considered okay in practice. So they are also sources of task laws. Then we have the departmental and official circular. So the FIRS, you know, do issue circular. So in 2020, a lot of circulars were flying around, you know, from the FIRS because uh, then they felt, oh, people are disturbing their business. So let's introduce some tax incentives and like in fact, since 2020, 
the FRS has been, you know, giving waiver, uh, waiver of interest and then penalty. Okay, for late filing, okay, for, for, for late return filing for companies and the likes. And recently you, you can you could see them, was it not in May? Okay, so they extended the deadline for VAT for filing VAT returns. I don't know if you are aware of that. So they extended the deadline for filing VAT returns from 21st of May up to 30th of uh, 31st of May. Okay, so up to 31st of May. One because of the public holiday, you know, and the likes. So that's uh Part of it, then we have customary laws, we have accepted recommendations of commission of inquiry, constitution, and practices of the revenue uh, department. That, oh, this is what they do. Now, recently, the uh, Finance Act of 2022, which was signed by the past president on uh, 28th of May 2020, uh, 2023, you know, has a retrospective application. Okay, because the educational tax rates, which do, used to be at 2%, was reviewed up or through the finance act of 2021, effective 1st January 2022, you know, then the finance act of 2022 now has further reviewed this, reviewed this up or to 3% from 2.5%, as having an effective date of 1st of May, or 1st of May 2023, when the president signed the finance bill, Okay, so and I had on May 28th. So you can see it has a re retrospective or retrospective application. So what now happened? The FRS, guru, 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 they have changed everything on the task promise. Now the task promise is showing education tasks at 30% instead of 2.5%. So meaning that if you have prepared your financial statement, the edited account has been signed, everything is ready, but there was delay in filing your tax return. Hmm, my friend, if you are filing it now, you are paying at 30%. So, and thank God you are not filing on tax program. So there's no interaction with the FRS people that, hey, uh, please, so uh, we have, uh, account has been uh, prepared since so, so, so the everything has been signed, only that we have not filed. There's, that is one of their problems. Okay, they have changed it. So some people may argue it that no, we have done this before this, before this, before this. So we are paying at 2.5%. But some people, because they've seen the practice by the FIRS, okay, they also was they just comply. They just or they just comply. That's that why we say the practices of the revenue department is also a source of task law in Nigeria. So let's move to the differences between tasks and other payments. Uh, let's say collection, levy, surcharge, surcharge, and the likes. So before we move forward, any question? Any question? Hope I'm not being fast. Hello, Vivian. No question for me. Just uh, hello. No question, sir. Well. <laughs> You're okay. Okay. So okay. So Vivian, where do you join us from? From Lagos, hmm? Lagos. Oh, a colour, a colour for you. That's fine. Okay. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Yeah. So you're welcome. Okay, so distinction between taxes and other payments. So we've known what tax is. The various types of taxes. We've seen them. The various types of tax, we've seen them. The classification of tax. We've seen them looking at the perspective of task body, task incidents, blah, 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 and the like. So we've seen everything. We've also taken the uh, concept of task, basis concept of taxation and the like. So now we know what task is. But there are some other payments we do pay. Can they be described as tasks? Or do we describe them as tasks? For instance, now, all these driver, Lagos driver. Thank God, most of them are from Lagos. Okay, so if they are picking their passenger from the garage or from the car park, from the park, you see all these guys with uh, cane. The Yoruba people call them call it uh, pankere. Some will take rubber, some will hold something like wire like this. Okay, so they approach the driver 
Oh me da, 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 oh me Sorry. So, the driver, they are compelled to pay. They don't have choice. You see them paying from one point. And you, that's why you, when you ask those drivers to stop you at a particular point, or maybe bus stop, they tell you, no, 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 I can drive there, I can drive there. That is, they don't stay there. They don't stop there. Okay, because, you know, if they should stop there, those guys will approach them and ask them for money, and they don't want to pay them. Okay, so those payments, can we refer them to, and can we refer them as tasks? Are they, are they tasks? Or are they a form of task? Shidima, are they a form of task? Vivian, are they tasks? Well, they call, they, they call it collective task. I don't know, that's what they call it. Yeah, I feel it's tasks because it's imposed on them. Yeah, yes, yeah. so they're forcing okay. them to pay it. Well, yes, that's it. Okay. So they, okay, so they, they call it collective tasks. I like that. Uh, uh, that's that way. Okay. However, okay. however, we cannot say that they are they are, they are in form of tasks. Okay? okay, so they are not tasks. They are levy. Okay, there was they are they are similar to tasks. Why do I say they are not tasks? The reason why I said they are not in form of tasks is because tasks is well administered okay. okay so and the form of collection the form of collection uh, is not not something to talk about okay so you see like them, the they punch the driver they can even remove his seat you see them they might stone the driver take plank destroy the wheel screen and the lights screen and mm -hmm. yeah, so and it's just unfortunate uh, the, uh, that the type of government we have is not covering that okay so and those monies too they are not going to the ministry of transportation okay mm. so you can call them rates or levy so where are the money going to the money where are they going to uh, it's going to the parking park and what what name they the just chairman. Name? They call them chairman. Park, the, the park chairman. and the Unicorn Committee. So they so are when I, when when I them are They are NERT, road workers and sites. Okay, so though uh there is this eight hundred naira, eight hundred naira that is the one that is going to the Ministry of Education and is paid once once in a day. Okay, once per day. So, but all every other ones they are getting, they are collecting from these drivers. You know, it's going to the chairman of the garage. They are, you know, they also have committee. They have the chairman, vice chairman, treasurer, finance, uh, finance officer. They have social secretary. <laughs> so they are running it like an organization or a society. So they have at the unit level, they have at the branch level. I don't know if they have regional. <laughs> so they have at the state level. So they also have at the regional level, maybe south, south, southwest and the likes. So there was a time I was in Wally. So in uh, this airport road. So most of that girl there, they are ladies, or let me say woman, a uh, woman rather. So they are women. So, but I don't see them dragging with the KK driver. Okay, so they even plead, they beg that uh, in their language, and some even speak um, um, broken English. That our uh, guy never pay me since when I beg, I never sell, I beg, come help me buy a ticket, I beg. But the case is different in Lagos. So, this is Lagos. <laughs> so, these are the, those collection are not a form of task okay so there are rates and uh, there are rates and levy so when we get to the multiple uh type of tasks or multiple transition in nigeria so we discuss that uh that better okay so a task is not a voluntary payment or donation okay 
So it's not a voluntary payment or donation. And that's like, you see that it's not all the drivers that pay those levy. So because there are some of the drivers that they're also part of the committee, they are part of the agreement, they are part of the union. So they, they don't pay. So they can have like 10 buses, you know, those their drivers will not pay. Ah, motor staff, ah, motor organ, ah, so those ones they will not pay. And they can even load any ton. So they don't they don't kill on ton. So once they are around, they load their passengers and they move. So that so tax is not a voluntary payment and it does not ex exclude anyone. So except those that are statutorily excluded. I mean, those that are excluded by law. So, <clears throat> but tax is a compulsory payment. Okay, so tax is what? Tax is a, what is a compulsory payment. So one of the distinction is that what? Tax is a compulsory and not a voluntary payment. Okay, so tax is a compulsory, but not, let me use but, okay? So tax is a compulsory Tax is a compulsory, but not a voluntary payment. So it is a compulsory payment. So, and it's not in form of donation or, or the likes. No, no, no. It's not donation. So it's not a voluntary donation. Okay. So it is a what? It is a compulsory uh, payment. It is a compulsory, compulsory payment. So that's one distinction. So, uh, then it is imposed by who? By the government. So, do you now see the reason I said those ones are not tax? So, tax is what? It is imposed by the government. It is imposed by who? By the government. So, those levies, who impose them? Mm -hmm. Those levies, those rates, we impose them. Individuals. Uh, you, mean the one that, individual. you mean the one that collecting from buses, uh, the commercial buses? Yeah, no. So those ones are imposed by us, by group of people. Or okay. So we have the MURCW, Abby. We have the RCAM, Abby. No transport employers, association workers. So, okay. so then we have the MURCW. So then recently, Lagos and Oyo State, they disturbed the MURCW. Then now they have uh, any conf parks and then garage, blah, 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 committee, Abby. Mm -hmm. So, because the task, uh, the levy they collect is not structured. Do you understand? It's not structured. So another the distinction is that uh, task is assessed in accordance with some reasonable uh, measure, okay? So or let's say task is legally, task is legally part by law, Abby. Task is legally backed by law. But those um, levy, those rates that they collected, so most of them are not legally backed, okay? So by law, and then uh, acts, okay, acts, constitution, HTC, okay. So then another thing is that a taxpayer cannot sue the government. A taxpayer cannot what? 
cannot sue the taxpayer cannot sue the government. Okay, cannot sue the government for not for not spending enough money for not what for not spending enough tax money in his community for not spending enough tax money in his community or local government area but even if fail. you pay more tax eh? it's not fair now you cannot sue them Abby. Mm, it's not fair you cannot sue them it's not fair mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's why you see them all the tax they take it to go and uh, beautify young personalize now specific places okay. that not that is not assessed to all but assessed to by uh, to as uh, specific individuals i network individuals okay so and again even if you pay 100 million as tax you can also government for not spending everything in your area okay so just imagine what is happening now most taxes, the huge amount of uh, tax revenue in Nigeria is from the south, south is from the southwest and the south south. Okay, so or let, or let me just say that it's from the south. Okay, so the south Nigeria is divided into two. We have the north and we have the south. So forget whether you are southeast or you are south south. So we have six geographical zones in Nigeria. We have the south. East, we have the south south and we have the southwest and we have the north central north east and we have northwest okay so we have north and south so now most of these stars are from the north, are from the south lagos states being the was being the number one you know the highly ranked of revenue generation so just imagine, look at our roads. Look at our roads. Okay. So compare it with the roads in the north. Okay. Compare it with the roads in the north. So during the Bari regime, just imagine the number of roads projects that were approved under his administration. Then compare it with the ones that are approved in the south the south east south south southwest okay so you you will find out that those ones are you know are much more than uh than what we have down here okay so we cannot see them okay so we cannot see because we are the one that is paying much of the tasks that they should uh that that they, they have misused our fund our money no okay so, and also a tax is not levied in return for any specific service rendered by the government to the taxpayer. So at the beginning of this class, I mentioned something like public goods. And a good example of public goods is road. So road is accessible by all, there's no restriction. And the, there is no yanga that uh, when I apply this road, I derive these benefits. And when you apply it, uh, such benefit is not yours, Now lie. So I made a good example of Dangote and the president. If they are going to Lagos Island now, let's say they are going to, uh, uh, let's say Lekki, okay? Let's say that they are going to Lekki now. So is it that they follow Ikorodu Road through to the stadium, then Eco Bridge, Akogon, then follow, uh, uh, what's this, Barak? Okay, VI and Lights, or they follow the Tomilan Bridge? Follow, uh, what's it called? Follow more and the likes. Okay, so they have just, they have two options. Either they follow Ikorodudo to the stadium or they follow Tommy language. So let me ask you, if you are going to Lekki, which road will you use? Vivian, well, you, like to go, you like to go by what time? Eh, or by hair. So, 
is for everyone. So except they choose to use shoppers or they want to go through water. Okay. Definitely. And if they are using shoppers, anybody too can use shopper if they have the money. They are using air. I mean, they are going, they are flying through air. So that one, but I cannot say. Uh, so and if they are using water, you too, you can use water. Parapata, you can hire a keno. Abi. So they use hey. water, you too, use water. There's no yanga. Mm. So if they are using <laughs> road, they use road, you too, you use road. So that's mm. a good example of public. These are good examples of public goods. Okay, so, and you cannot say that because you are paying millions and stars to the federal government. So when you want to apply a Kurudu road, they should stop everybody for you. They should stop everybody for you because you are the most, uh, 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 task, you, are the task, you are the only individual that pays uh, huge tasks or the highest tasks in Nigeria or in Lagos. No, nobody will even know you. Okay, so you are not even as popular as uh, uh, all these artists. <laughs> so go and see that. So then let's move to canon of transition. Do you have any question? No, any yes. question? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So Adam Spins propounded the following, you know, attributes or principles, otherwise known as canons of you know taxation that the modern tax system should have. So starting from equity. So under this equity set, we have to. We have the Vatican, Vatican, we have what? We have the horizontal. We have the Vatican, we have the horizontal. So equity means that tasks should be easy to pay. Everybody should have the ability to pay. So if I don't, if you are introducing a task and 80% of Nigerians don't have the ability to pay, okay, there is no equity. Okay, there's no equity. So yes, there was a time the Jonathan administration was trying to introduce luxury tasks. So the luxury tasks to be paid on exclusive, uh, you know, uh, exclusive or expensive uh, items, properties such as jewelry, yacht, you know, uh, what's the name of all these exclusive cars? Okay, G wagon, name them. I've forgotten some of them because I don't have I don't have them on my list for now. No money. So Lamborghini, uh, a lot of them like that. Okay. Ferrari. Ferrari, thank you. Uh -huh. So those cars now, then Jonathan Administration was thinking of, you know introducing a task called luxury task, luxury task, okay? So some will be at 35%, some will be at 30%. So when you are bringing in those cars, okay, you pay that 5% of the cost of those cars, okay? So what? To the government. Those exclusive wines, jewelries, yacht, and the likes, okay? So, you know, you have a routine when you are going to buy any of those luxury cars that hey, when I'm bringing in this car that was 250 million naira, I'll be paying 35% or 40% to the government. Ah, oh boy, 35% of 250 million naira. That's running to about, let's say, 70,000, uh, 70 million naira. Oh. I know they buy this car again. It's just to discourage people. Okay. So then me that I don't have up to that. Will I even be thinking of buying it? So there's no equity in that one because the task is, is not going to be paid by all. But nevertheless, government has its own way. So in that way, government is what's trying to reduce wasteful expenditure. Wasteful what? Wasteful expenditure. So you see some of these guys, they have Lamborghini, they have Ferrari, they have a lot of them. And they cannot ride two at a time. So wasteful expenditure. 
money that they should have used for investment. Okay, so all these small small boys too that they are listening to their music. All these small small boys too that they see them on social media. We now start doing a uh, sham. We start doing money ritual and the likes. So it has a negative impact on our economy. So I even love this uh, government to introduce the luxury tax. Sorry, it's not because I don't have money, but I see them as and something not necessary. If you, want, if you need them, one is okay. Not to the extent of buying two, three, four. Like one billionaire, he just one day we woke up and decide to get, is it Ferrari or Lamborghini he bought for his children then, each of them. So everyone has their own luxury car. So if he's paying like 35% now, so some people still have strong coconut egg, they will still grow it because the, the money is there. Thank God for giving them money. Okay, nevertheless, government too will also have what more income so that to cater for the poor, for public goods, for married goods. There should be more schools, there should be more hospitals, world class hospitals, and the likes. Then we move to certain. Sorry, I mentioned we have vertical and horizontal. So vertical, this is then the tendency for the proportion of income taken as tax to rise as income rises. So a good example of this is a progressive tax system you mentioned earlier. So ranging from 7% upwards up to 24%. Then we have horizontal equity. So this is the principle that taxpayers with the same income and commitment should pay the same amount of tax. So uh, that's why we say that, okay, so any individual that earns revenue between 25 million naira to 100 million naira, so that's the class, it's a boundary. So you pay what you pay at 20%. And anything above 100 million naira, you pay at what you pay at 30%. But this is not enough. This is also almost close to vertical. But a good example of horizontal is what is our value added tax. Should understand 7.5%. Whether you are down go of this Nigeria or you are Elon Musk of this world, or you are the president, okay? Or you are someone from my village, you, you pay fat at 7.5% in Nigeria on valuable goods and services, isn't it? Hello, is that true? Yes, yes, yes. That's horizontal yes. equity. But vertical equity, the more, the more money you have, more tasks to pay. So then starting to task payers should know the exact amount they are expected to pay, when to pay it and how to pay it. So you should know what you should know what to pay, when to pay, where to pay, and how to pay it. W W W H. Hmm? What to pay, when to pay where to pay it and what and how to pay it. So a farmer, you know, should know when to, what to pay as, ta as tax, Abby. They should know what to pay as tax. So are they paying crops as their tax or they are to sell the farm produce? Yeah. Then they pay tax yeah. for money, okay? So when should they pay it? Are they to pay at the time of harvesting? or they should pay as they realize the sales, or they should pay at the year end or after the year end. Where are they going to pay it? Are they going to their village heads to pay? Are they going to the uh, sheaves in the town to pay? Or are they paying it to the king or they are paying it to the government? So where are they paying it? Okay, so if they are paying it to the government, how do they pay? Okay, how do they pay? So should they just carry money and come to the FRS office? Oh, yeah, I got it. These are past. So it, has, it used to happen in the past. So the bank official will be in the FRS office. So those that want to pay tax, they pay that and, and the like. So, but now they don't even, and at the point, everybody goes to the bank to pay, come to the FRS office or LRS office or whichever tax authority with your teller, evidence of payment and the likes. But now everything is done online for FRS. You, everything go pay online, okay? So paying online, I mean, you file all your returns online. You can pay your money online if you have internet banking or you can, you know, generate your 
uh, reference number, make the payment. And you can, also, you can also choose to go to the bank, but all filings are now done online. And most states are now adopting that. So LRS started it. So then I can see all your state, all your states, some states too, they are doing it. So FCTRS2 is doing it now, okay? So that's certainty in the tax payments. Then convenience, thank God for the FRS, they have, they have embraced technology, okay? So with tax promise, you can pay your tax online anytime at any point, okay? So like I said, it LIRS started it, okay? But now FRS2 has adopted it and some state internal revenue service too has adopted same. So then we have economy in collection, okay? That is economy in collection cost. So the amount spent in the cost of collecting tax should be rel rel relatively low, okay, than the amounts collected. So, and we say the cost of administration should be quite lower or far lower than what, far lower the, uh, uh, than the, uh, what's it called? Than the, 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 no, let me put it simple. The cost of collection should be quite lower. So when I say cost of collection, it's also the same as cost of administration. Okay, so it should be lower than the amounts collected. So if you say that, okay, the revenue we generated from the uh, taxpayer this year is, one trillion naira is one trillion naira. Okay, but then is one trillion naira. Then the cost of administration, cost of select, uh, collection is about one point five trillion naira. One one point five trillion naira. Please tell me where is the efficiency coming from? Where is the economy and collection cost coming from? Okay, so then we have flexibility. We have neutrality. Okay, so then we have difficult to evade. So, and that's, that's that a good tax system was provide tools for cashing up with tax evaders and plugging of loopholes in tax laws. So it should be easy to administer. Okay, so, and then the cost of administration should be lower. There should be impartiality. Okay, so there should be no discrimination in tax collection. So don't say that because so, 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 so person is, is big, is, uh, is high net towards individual. So you now have a specific form of collecting tasks from those people. You treat everybody equal, okay? So then simplicity should be simple. So by the word, what, when, where, how, okay? So it should be simple for everybody. So I should understand why I'm paying, what I'm paying for, do you understand? So we are paying it and how I'm paying it. Okay, so then let's see what this money are being used for. Then productivity. So the tax system should yield enough revenue to the government and also not in that production. Okay, so let's see if uh, uh, infrastructure project. Let's see if having impact in our social lives, securities and the likes. Okay, so. A good tax system should also have political uh, uh, acceptability. Okay, sorry, I kept these slides initially for my explanation for each of those uh, principles of um, taxation. But as God, we have it. Everything has been explained. Okay, so then we have multiple taxes. So in Nigeria, taxes are being collected and imposed are different tiers of government. So how many tiers of government do we have in Nigeria? Hello. I think I'm correct. I think we have three. 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 They are. Federal government, state and local government. Federal, Federal state, state and local government. Local government. So the tax regime under which various and similar types of taxes are imposed on taxpayers by different types of governments is regarded as what as multiple taxation is regarded as multiple uh, taxation so a good example is where federal governments impose valid tax okay on consumption of what on consumption of goods goods and then services and made it applicable throughout the federation some states particularly 
Lagos State also introduce this same consumption class. And because of that, owners of hotels and restaurants, clubs, and the likes, you know, sued the Lagos State government and the federal government for collecting the voters. So they are now praying that the courts should, you know, uh, make a decision or uh, they are praying that the courts should in their favor. Okay. So is it FIRS or the LRS that has the statutory responsibility to collect consumption tax? So because they are paying double taxation, so they want it to stop. So the courts now recently was not in 2022 or 2021. So the FRS won against the LRS at the Court of Appeal level. So I'm not sure if the LRS has appealed further to the Supreme Court. Okay, so I want to believe the case is now at the Supreme Court level. Okay, so I think this happened around 2011 or 2012. Okay, or, no, or 2015 there about. So when the owners of hotels, uh, clubs, rest, rest, and restaurants, bars, you know, sued uh, the government for these multiple tasks. So, um, that's so this was also introduced on the same words on the same principle. Okay, on the same principle. So that's a good example. So the local governments are also, you know, the most guilty as they impose all kinds of taxes. Okay, they impose or they impose all kinds of taxes. But again, we regard them, you know, we refer them as what as levy. We regard them as levy and not tasks like that. So it's only the federal government and the state government that has the statutory power to, you know, levy tasks on individual. You understand to impose tasks on individual. So but Let's even assume that they are they are tasks. Like I asked you initially at the beginning, that all this collection from these uh, touts, the garage people. So you say that they are tasks because they are collective, but they are collective levy. Okay, so they are collective taxes. So if they are tasks, so then it means that government is getting much more from people than expected. Okay. So I engaged one of these drivers one day. He said, on a daily basis, they pay nothing less than, it depends on the routes they apply. So 8,000 Naira, 8,000 Naira to those Agbelo people. That's much. It's much now. So how much do they take home? So now you now be blaming them, blaming them that they didn't send their, their children to school. So now assume that the, the bus is on is, is, is on delivery. So that is it is not owned by the person and it is not on higher purchase. So maybe on a daily basis now they deliver 10,000 era. So how much how much do they earn? Okay, so remember there is also wear and tears on the bus and the likes. The driver will want to eat, the driver must also take something home. Okay, so a lot. The last man is there, the tax force is there, and the likes. So these people, those drivers, it's not like they are working for those people. Okay, it's not like they are working for those people. So just imagine, and even these local government people now, you may want to follow a street now to somewhere. You just see them, mountain roadblocks. You just see them stopping you that you have fly one way that you are on one way. Okay, I can't see where it was written that this place is one way. They will now show you that you can see, you, so you now see that sign, that road sign, that this place is one way. So some of them, you see them, you see that the sign is not visible from afar, or the sign is placed some, somewhere where you cannot easily identify or sight from 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 a long distance, okay. So you then you, you they will tell you that you must pay. If you don't pay, they will drag you to the local government. And some people may even you know deflate your tire. Some the all sort of things. So the local government are the most guilty as they impose all kinds of taxes. And the tier of government ensure the collection of taxes or levies imposed on taxpayers 
with reckless abandon to the extent that it became a national problem and consequently attracted the attention of the federal authorities. So then what are the different types of you know multiple tasks we have? So to in brief, so I have this here loading and offloading levies. If a truck enter a market now, they collect offloading levy. All this my 12. Uh, uh, Ilepo and different markets. If you go to Aba market now, is there. If you go to initial market, they are there. Mm -hmm. So everywhere, loading and offloading levies, permit for closure of streets, road tax, entertainment tax, refuse collection tax, market taxes and levies. All these guys selling pure water in the market. They pay levy, so they pay tax. All these women selling fish by the roadside, especially when they are close to the market or within the local government area, they pay tax. If they don't pay, all these malam pushing truck, they pay tax. Mm -hmm. So how much are they earning? All these carrier guys, they pay tax. And you see them, the local government, uh, uh, do I say collect or whatever? Odin King, Odin King, some road Koboko, some road rubber. So that is, if you refuse to pay them, they can do and undo. Okay, so they will beat you and nobody, you know, will we, we, we rescue you. So, Different types of taxes uh, of multiple tasks. You know, we have a lot though. We have tenement trades, we have a lot, naming of streets and the likes. So if you want to have cow, uh, what was it called? Stuff, all these abatio and the likes, you pay. Okay, so then we have collection of multiple taxes. Okay, so unorthodox procedures and methods which are used to collect these taxes and levies include engagement of revenue agents or consultants. So the use of revenue agents or consultants was popular with the state and local government tax authorities. So a good example of this is the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. So before now, they used to use, uh, okay, they still use them now. Um, what do they call the consultants? They call them, uh, Hey, uh, <laughs> sorry, I forgot. So, when the LIS people are going for audit, for tax audit, so okay, they call them Tama, Tama. So, tax authority, um, blah, 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 agency. So, they call them, is it Tamak? Uh -huh. So, ta they call them Tamak. Okay. So either Tamak or Tamasha, it is star something. Okay, so they are agents, they are task consultants, they are consultants with the task authority. Okay, so why some task authorities at the state level employ external task consultants for the audits, assessments, collection of taxes, and the like? So the local government collect revenue under the ages of the joint revenue association. So, so under the uh, Joint uh, Revenue Association, so those guys now engage all these touts, okay? They engage the touts, harass people and the likes, harass road users, the markets, markets people, just to ensure they collect money. So we have mountain of roadblocks. The police are not, exempted from this, I'm sorry, okay? So, especially if you do travel on the highway, okay? So, you see them mounting different, different roadblocks so that they collect money. So, they are there to ensure uh, safety, okay? To ensure safety, let people move freely and the likes, but we do see the negative part too. 
Okay, so collection agents must mount roadblocks and they put you know spikes on the road to force motorists to stop by the approach of the uh, approach the roadblocks. So police are not exempted from this. I'm sorry again. Okay, so government solutions to what to the problems of multiplicity of taxes. What do you think government can do to reduce this multiple taxation? Vivian. If they can Fair help to reduce, speak. Sorry. No, if they can help to reduce the the collection of taxes because this multiple is really not helping people because most of these like let me take commercial example now like those commercial buses now if they can pay eight thousand as you said like an instance if they can pay thousand to to the collect uh, the people collecting the taxes and at the end of the day they go home with five thousand they still have other things they use this money for so if the government can use these collections and make life easy for these people it's definitely going to help in some other ways to reduce these problems and people are facing and not just that thing is even making full stop the consumption of, of, of some things to inflate as well so it's really really affecting both the people involved and the people who are interested in doing one or two things. It, it keeps people pended in what decision you want to do in life. Yes, yeah, so because, and that is one of the reasons why in Lagos, the cost of transportation, you know, when you compare it to what we have in other states, the difference is always, always high. The difference is always, always high. In fact, in some places, when I was in Wari then, okay, so we take keke for 15 naira. And then in Lagos, there's no 15 naira keke. There's no 15 naira keke. And the lamp of the aguro, the you know people I use the other time. Most of them are ladies or women. And they even beg people, the keke drivers, to pay them. <coughs> they beg the keke drivers to pay them. But in Lagos, you see the pouch with king. They call it pankere. So if the driver misbehaves or the driver is refusing or delaying paying them, they, they use it on the driver. They can even remove the side mirror, you know, smash the windscreen and the likes. Okay. So yes, that's fine for you, Vivian. Then she demand, what do you have for us? What can government do to curb this or reduce this multiple transition? She demand, are you there? Ambrosia, you want to try? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I could be okay. um, Number one is um structure. I believe structure first. You should be what structure. So when when that one is settled, so then they should limit the maintenance limits the the levies and the the rates because I I don't see the effect of the money they're collecting. It's just their own pocket. So structure and they should reduce those things. No simple there. So and also also. They should do the road because it's not fair collecting such money from the drivers and they are um they are paying such money also you have to repay their own buses too because bad roads you have to repay your bus imagine when rain falls and the the potholes and everything so that's it Jerry. thank you okay thank you so going to make good use of the money they are collecting and those guys collecting money unlawfully or that are not accountable for. Okay, so they should be uh, they should be blocked. Okay, so that was a good contribution from you guys. So so the federal government in its freedom resolved the issue of multiplicity of taxes by amending the taxes and levies acts, you know, by the promulgation of taxes and levies approved list for collection acts amendment order 2015. So there is a conclusive and then uh, sorry, concurrent, concurrent and exclusive list. Okay, so there are some taxes that it's only the federal government that can collect it. Then there are some the state governments and that of the uh, local governments. Okay, 
So <clears throat> the federal government specifies in very clear terms the types of taxes collectible by each tier of government. So then we move to voluntary donation and tax. So why differentiating between tax and other payments? So we say that tax is compulsory payment, it's a compulsory payment, and it's not the voluntary uh, payment. So a tax is not the voluntary payment or voluntary donation. So rather it is an enforced contribution exerted according to the legislative authority, you know, and is imposed by government. So a tax is usually a monetary charge on a person's or entity's uh, income. Okay, so for instance, now the federal government has the FIRS, who is the revenue collection agency. That's the authority for the federal government. Then at the state level, we have the state internal revenue service. So each state has their own. Then uh, in Lagos State, we have the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, so which is the authority or the agency started with the responsibility of tax administration. Okay, so taxes may be imposed on individual entities, assets, and on transactions. Okay, so then resistance to taxation. Are we all willing to pay tax in Nigeria? Ambrosia, are we all willing to pay tax in Nigeria? Not everybody is willing. Why? Uh, because they feel the basic, well, the basic things that the government needs to do for them are not put in place. And um, they just feel the money is not even enough. This little money they are making, the government still wants to take from it, you know. So not everybody is willing to pay tax. Okay, so yes, you are, you are correct. So... When tax was introduced in Nigeria, so to the northern people, it wasn't new. You know, most of them practice Islam. And in the Islamic religion, there's something they call uh, zakat. Zakat, okay. And there's something they call sadako. Okay, so these are in form of tax. So they pay zakat on their money. Okay, so it has a threshold like they pay 2.5 percent, you know, of the money they have, okay, from one year to another, from the beginning of a particular period up to the end of, so just it, for a period of 12 months, so they pay 2.5 percent of their uh, money, of their savings, okay, and Sarah call is voluntary, they pay that, and the like, so it's not new to them, so they embrace it, they accept it. But in the southern part of the country, wow, trust me now, the Yoruba people, the Egbas, okay, the Egbas. So, the, you know, they revolted against the United government because tax was imposed and this led to the what? To the Ijemo massacre of 1914. Ijemo massacre of 1914 okay so that's from the people of our doctor so the riot of 1918 which rail lines were torn up trains and railway stations looted and over 500 people including a chief and a european were killed occurred as a result of resentment of imposition of taxes among other grievances so <laughs> initially it wasn't easy it wasn't easy and to the south south okay so there were riots in worry there was riots in worry and quali okay in 1927 in 1927 so when poll tax assessment of two and a half percent they call it they call it poll tax so it is two and a half percent of annual income, two and a half percent of what? Of annual income, two and a half percent of annual income started in areas of the western provinces that were not previously captured in the past. So, also in 1929, there were serious and widespread tax trials by women in Haba and over the divisions of eastern provinces. So, the Haba women riot was sparked up when a warrant chief Okugo started counting women, children, and animals in the village of Oloko, village of Oloko in Aba, okay, in Aba, 
So that was Abia State. So rumor quickly spread that women and children were soon to be assessed to task, and this spiked, you know, it results to riots. Serious one. You know, it's in uh, money where I use my sweat and me one person can come talk say he gain one share for the money. Kai, I know go agree. So now so fight start to. But thank God today everything is now well structured. So some people are willing to pay pass. In fact, they even go to the task people themselves that oh yeah, oh yeah. I have this company. I want to be a what? I want to be a responsive citizen. Okay. I want to be a responsible uh, citizen. So that's 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 that. So now let's go to the history of taxation. So the history of taxation from the Bible and the Quran for the Quran. So that's the Muslim. So they pay their cards. So that is it's like property and income tax. I've said it earlier that it's like 2.5% on certain properties and 5% on treasure. Okay, so then in the Bible, let's go to Matthew, Matthew 22, verse 21. Don't open your Bible now. <laughs> so you can go to that later. So the early Christians of the New Testament you know, including Jesus Christ of Nazareth, supported payment of taxes. So render therefore unto Kesa. Okay, what belongs to us? Complete it. What belongs to Caesar? <laughs> so, so the Yoba people will say, if you want to Kesari, if you want Kesari. So. That's just to show you that you cannot blame the government for 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 taking pass on you. Hmm? They are following what they are following the injunctions of of the Bible. Do I say Quran to you? Yes, but let me tell you that they have not been applying it, you know, in the way it was prescribed. So that's why. Your pastor will still ask you to pay tithe. Then the Muslims are still asked to pay what? Zakat. It is compulsory. Okay. It is what it is compulsory. So these are what government should be collecting and not your company income tax at 30%. Uh, this other one was too. So that's why you just have to see those ones as contribution that, okay, we want to develop our community. Let's contribute money. So we have appointed our leader, so let them let them do it, you know, do it for us. We give them money to do those things. But in our religion, we still what? we still have to comply. We still have to what? we still have to comply. So that's 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 that. So that's just a brief of the history of taxation. So in the in Nigeria, you know, we have lot. Lord Lugard also introduced the ordinance income tax. Ordinance what? Ordinance income tax. So if you want to learn more about the pre-colonial and colonial periods, I have that here. So Lord Lugard introduced the ordinance income tax in Northern region. So this was known as community tax. Changes were made to community tax in 1917 as a result of problems that arose and these crystallized into the native revenue ordinance, which was amended in 1980 to extend its jurisdiction to Abelkuta and Benin. So it was made applicable to the East in 1928. And don't forget that I told you that there were riots. Serious one. Serious one. We know go agree or we know go agree. We know they pay tax. We know go agree. Okay, so that happened then. But let's now go to the post-independence. You know, then it was the Oyimbo people that was introducing those stars. So, where eh, for where yeah, this place in Nigeria, nobody was, nobody Britain. So, post independence, now this is Nigeria. So, the Insta region passed the finance law number one of 1958, by which all males of age 16 and above and females of the same age in Aba 
Calabar, Enugu, Onitsha, Umaya, and Port Harcourt townships were assessed. So taxable persons were those who incomes were in excess of 100 pounds. You know, then there was no error. So we are spending pounds, pounds, and pounds, and pounds. That's why we should still have that pound still in Nigeria and they take, they take away naira. Or God give, or God help us blaze our naira so that it has value more than the dollar and the pound still. Nobody is saying amen. Don't worry, I will not ask you to drink money. So, amen. <laughs> so this law also introduced pay as your end system by which employers became agents for tax collection from you know, their employees, sorry, from four, come on. So uh, uh, <clears throat> employers became agents for tax collection from their employees in Nigeria. With its introduction, the direct income tax ordinance ceased to apply in what, in the Eastern region. It ceased to, to apply in the Eastern uh, region so this law became effective on 1st april 1958 1st april 1958 so the western region also passed its own income tax law to replace the direct income tax ordinance in 1957 okay in 1957 so it has similar characteristics to the finance law of eastern nigeria then the northern region passed its own law you know, Northern Nigerian Personal Task Law. Northern Nigeria Personal Task Law of 1990 words. Guess. Of 1990 words. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me help you. Of 1992. Okay, so the Nigerian Income Tax Ordinance of 1943 remained in force at the federal level. Okay, so which is the federal territory, federal territory of Lagos, federal territory of Lagos, up until 1961, up until 1961, when the personal income tax. Lagos Act of 1961 was enacted by the federal government, was enacted by the federal government. So then that's a big history of the Nigerian tax law. Okay, so you have everything here. You can read them up later. Okay, so then we have reasons why governments collect taxes. Reasons why governments collect Taxes. So one is to maintain general administration. I told you we are paying their salary. Is that is our money they are using? So anytime any one of them misbehave, let's bring them out. <laughs> My friend, it's not easy. Okay. So now, so it's to maintain general administration. So the administrative machinery of a country may collapse if there is no money. I told you, government is a business. So. Can any business thrive without without money? Vivian? No, no, business, no. Not even anywhere in the world. It will not thrive. Okay, so government is a business and we must put money in it to make it thrive. So therefore, tax is a form of one of, you know, source of revenue to, to the government. Also, tax collection for the government reason why they collect it is towards maintain internal law and order. We have police, we have national security, soldiers, air force, uh, you know, navy. So if government is not any money, where do they get money to pay these people? Are they not also Nigerian? So these are people from within us that, that have taken the pledge, you know, towards to secure our territory, to protect our territory. Shouldn't they be paid? Me and you, we can work freely to our work, place of work, to earn our own income. So those guys that are now, that, that have now, you know, pledged to serve their country, shouldn't they be rewarded? Hmm? 
Hello. They should, they should definitely. Mm -hmm. because... So we need to pay them. Let them, let's make them happy too. So that they can keep to strengthening, you know, our, 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 our security. So then we have redistribution of income, taking money from the rich, then distributing to the poor. It have through the infrastructure of infrastructure of good and um, roads, public goods, merit goods, you know, and the likes. Then we have to provide social amenities. We have to protect infant industries in the country. So the infant industries, let's governments give them money. So they have collected the tasks. So let there be, uh, we have, there was a time we have, uh, is it trader money or money trader? So there is trader money, there is, you know, a lot all these entrepreneurship and uh, stuff, um, empowerment program and the likes, okay? So it's just to protect infant industries, then to promote exports. So on exports, governments do not charge tax, so you don't pay tax on exports, okay? So it's just to encourage exports and that contributes to our GDP, Abby. But to discourage imports, of course, you do, you increase the tax rate, Abby. So, that's that. Then we have to discourage the importation of dangerous or harmful goods. Earlier, I used an example of cigarettes, okay, then carbonated drinks. So also to combat inflation through physical measures to correct unfavorable balance of payment to stimulate growth and development in an economy. So my keys, my class keys, my class keys, justification for taxation as the most reliable source of revenue to governments. What would you say? Would you say that it is justifiable or go is government justifiable for collecting tax from its citizen, from collecting tax from its citizen for the purpose of administering its admi uh, uh, the government? Okay, that is for the purpose of administration, uh, for economic development, for to maintain law and order and the likes. So it's government justifiable. So let's start. Uh, okay, so Ambrosia, you can meet your mic to speak. So you have five minutes. Okay, justification for taxation as the most reliable source of revenue to government. Um, well, it is one of the sources of revenue to government. But if you say most reliable source, I don't think so because people find a way to not to pay tax. You understand? So, but if uh, there are appropriate measures set in place to enforce compliance. Well, I think it, it's a very reliable source, yeah. And then why I don't feel is the most reliable source is because of corruption. People are looking for how to steal from the government. So um, if, all the collection of taxes does not go straight into the government account. It can also be diverted. Okay. As a source of revenue, yes. As a source of revenue, yes. But there are other sources anyway. So is it the most reliable of all sources of revenue to the government? Uh, yeah, if there is a full compliance and measures are put in place to make sure that that money actually gets to the government, yes. Okay, thank you. So, Vivian? Okay, uh, I want to add to what she has just said. Um, okay. You see, most of these collections they, that the government are collected from the people as levy imposed, it's not well justified. In terms of now they are using it as a selfish thing, 
the economy is supposed to be boosted, you know, and again, the amenities of the uh, of provided is supposed to be enjoyed by the people, even them as well. Then when you come to um, the the law, like sorry, the law, you, the imposing of law to some of these are uh, uh, enforcement. They are not well being carried out. Okay. So is it the most reliable source of revenue to the government? So most of this needs to be looked into for this to be the color. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so most of those revenue uh, collected that are being used by the uh, government, I mean, for the people to enjoy, they are not well maintained. So what are they, what is the justification that are using all this money to do or to, to, to feel like or to enjoy? So this doesn't even encourage people to, to go on with uh, imposing most of these levies in, in, in pardon in most. Okay, so um, Shidima, I mean, <laughs> sorry, is this, Shidima that just okay. Do I have Vivian or is it Vivian that has spoken just now? Vivian just spoke now. Shidima has also done thing. And I, I just stepped okay. out, so I didn't get the question. Please. Okay, the question Bye. is, you know, earlier I said I'll be having quiz. So the quiz now is will you say it's justifiable for the government? Uh, to collect tasks from people or its citizens. If yes, is taxation the most reliable source of revenue to um, uh, government or I don't know say before the government, even in the Bible, they said give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar, give what belongs to God to God. So it's kind of, it's right for the government to um collect tax and i feel it's um, one of the reliable source most one of the reliable source so so but yes it is but uh where the citizens have issues is the implementation of the or what they are, are they using the money for that is um where the um what is for me so collecting tax is fine, it's proper, but uh, maybe the rate of the taxes, maybe the percentage, if they might reduce it, or they do tax cuts, which is fine, which they are doing in some place. But, uh, that's okay. So, I mean, I didn't come coming on time, so this is just my, I can ask my question. Okay, so yes, uh, you have all said, uh, let me put it this way, you have all tried your best. Okay. So, yes, transition will remain the most reliable source of revenue to the government. You say why? One, the cost of collection, the cost of collection is, uh, let me just say low, I should not say considerable low. So is low or cheap, okay, when you compare to some other sources of revenue. So for instance, now we have oil revenue for oil now. Nigeria does not have, no longer has its own uh, refinery, refinery it operates, okay, as at present. So it means that all the crude oil has to be taken out of the country. Then all these marketers, all these, uh, oil importers, we, you know, bring back fossil fuel, diesel, kerosene. And over the years, government has been paying subsidy, 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 into the hands of these corrupt or the so-called uh, importers or marketers of these uh, 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 fossil fuel, let me just use for safe because they have removed subsidy uh, on kerosene long ago. Diesel, they have removed subsidy. 
So on petrol. And these people that are even bringing the lowest quality of petrol to our country. And after our government has paid subsidy, they will still take part of the, you know, uh, the quantity they have received subsidy, subsidy for to other country, exporting the Nigerian government and the Nigerian citizen. Okay, so now, how much are we earning from oil revenue now? How much are we earning from oil revenue? And imagine the amount of money government is spending on that sector. Okay, so then let's look at agriculture. Government will have to empower a lot of, you know, farmers, entrepreneurs in the agri, agri business for them to earn more revenue from the agri business. Okay, so just mention it. Okay, so tax has remained the most reliable source of revenue to government in every in, anywhere in the world. Okay, so because tax payer will pay, they will pay if there is you know, good mechanism in place. If the government has structure, if they have captured all their citizens, I mean, the taxable ones, okay, if they have the data, you know, and like, so the cost of collection is uh, is low. So another thing is that, you know, tax is compulsory, it is a compulsory payment. Okay, it is a compulsory, compulsory levy, you know, imposed, on individual imposed on taxpayer. So they will pay it initially. They must pay. They don't have choice. Okay, so at least it is regular. It is certain that money will come from those taxpayers. Do you understand? Money will come from them. God forbid bad thing. Except everybody dies. That's when governments will stop any revenue from taxation. Do you understand? Okay. So the only thing that is injuring it is that people have not been seeing the effects of this money they are collecting. In fact, Nigeria should be disclosing more than what they are saying they earn as revenue from tax, if everybody is paying, okay? If we are all captured in the tax net, do you understand? Okay, so, and another thing is that there should be what, there should be enlightening enlightenment program okay so a lot of people are not aware of tasks or the type of tasks they should pay when they should pay it how to pay it and where okay so so tradition as mentioned we always remain the most reliable source of revenue uh towards to government except there are no people there are no citizens again that's when government will earn money from what from Task, but for other sector, other sources of revenue to the government. Okay, so the government is in business. Okay, so they are in business. So those ones, there is direct benefit. Okay, so um, all other sources. Or let me put it this way. There is no direct benefit. Okay. There is no direct benefit to task payer for paying for paying. Tax. There's no direct benefit to taxpayer for paying their tax. So this is why it will always remain. And these are just some of the reasons why it will always remain the most reliable source of revenue to the government. So we have the Nigerian tax uh, system, so which involves a tripartite aspect, namely the tax policy, tax laws, and tax administration. So I'll only be taking this in brief. It's not, it's not part of the scope of this class. Okay, so you do it in your subsequent class. So well, we have task policy, so which is a general statement of intention, which guide the thinking and the action of all consent towards the realization of the set goals. And what are the set goals? We need to earn revenue for administration of 
governments, then for law and order, social amenities, infrastructural projects, among others. So under this movement of emphasis from income tax to consumption tax, I make use of the Finance Act of 2019, where there was an exemption for some companies, especially those ones that have revenue of 25 million and below, then for those ones that are in 25 million, above 25 million, about less than 100 million, they paid tax at 20%, income tax at 20%. Then those any above 100 million, they pay income tax at 30%. But consumption tax, value tax rate was reviewed from 5% to what? To 7.5%. So that is a shift. Okay, then we have a law regime. We have introduction of self assessment scheme. So, in Nigeria, we practice self assessment task scheme whereby individual taxpayers, corporate taxpayers, assess themselves to task, pay what they felt is due to them as tasks. Then, later on, the government you know, come for audits to assess them whether they have paid what is due from them. Okay, so then we have the task laws. We have the task laws, personal income tax, company income tax, petroleum profit tax, capital gains tax, validated tax, special education, time duty. So these are the task laws we have, we currently have in Nigeria. So these are the task laws uh, we currently have in Nigeria. So then the task, task administration, so such so that we have three tasks of government in Nigeria. So taxes are also being administered as all tiers of government, so at each level of government. So at the federal government level, we have the Federal Internal Revenue Service. And at the state level, we have the Board of Internal Revenue, usually referred to as the State Internal Revenue Service. Then at the local government level, we have the Local Government Revenue Committee. So all these are legally backed. For the FRS, we have the sections one, two, and three of the Company Income Tax Act. Then for the State Board of Internal Revenue, we have the sections 85A, B, and C of the Personal Income Tax Act as amended. Then for the Local Government Revenue Committee, we have sections 85D and E of Personal Income Tax Act as amended. So this is a brief of the Nigerian tax system. We have the tax policy, we have the tax administration, then we have the tax laws. So finally, I've come to the end of this class. And in this class, we have discussed what tax is all about. We differentiate between tax and taxation. So tax is a compulsory levy imposed by the government for the purpose of meeting its need, for the purpose of meeting its need and this and that of the citizen. Why taxation is the process of levying, imposing, and administering, you know, the tax itself. So the nature and objectives of taxation are explained. You know, the basic concepts of taxation or in taxation, classification of tasks, historical background of taxation in Nigeria are well captured in this class. Differences between taxes and levies with other charges are highlighted. The justification of taxation and why tasks should be, you know, the most relevant source of revenue to the government was also discussed. Then lastly, we discussed the Nigerian tax system where we look at tax policy. Uh, remind me again, what did we discuss under the Nigerian tax system? Tax policy, then we have two other ones. What are they? Vivian, Ambrosia, Shidema. We have tax policy, mm -hmm. two other ones. <laughs> Yeah. We have tax policy, tax administration. Then the last one what was it? Hey. We have Isn't it from um the tax impact tax shift? No, 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 no. The Nigerian under the Nigerian tax system. The last slide we discussed. The last two. That was the Nigerian tax system. Yeah, we discussed the task policy, the task law, task administration. You know, the task law is the administration, the personal income, the valid tax act, right? 
under the tax administration, I just mentioned the Federal Land Revenue Service, State Board Internal Revenue Service, and then the Local Government Revenue Committee. So thank you guys for joining us in today's class. We all appreciate you. We have these multiple choice questions. So that means we share this slide with you after this class. Okay, so you have to practice the multiple choice questions and uh, the short answer questions here, yeah? then these assignments. Okay, so practice the multiple choice question and the short answer question. Immediately after this class, then submit that to me. So just go to the platform the platform to check for Abdelgeni Bamidele. Abdelgeni Bamidele. So that's my WhatsApp name. Okay, so just send them to me. Okay, so then put your name when you are sending. My name is Shidima Ambrosia, then Vivian. Okay, so for the assignments, you should submit them before the next class. Okay, you should submit them before the next class. So again, we have come to the end of today's class. We are ICANN online to those. I mean, I can. So if I can, you too, you can. Okay. Again, thank you guys for joining us in class today. Please help us bring your friend. Okay, so we have been in this market for long, for quite some time. We've been doing an ICANN, ATS, and the likes. So we have ACC classes too. So we are just launching our site in class. So we've been doing it somehow, 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 but the online class has come to stay. So please, next week, we are starting our class by 7.30, okay, 7.30, this next week, Saturday, okay, so we'll be meeting again. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, bye.